it's Dr. Sue, Cancer Vet, and I'm here to tell you some of my favorite medications and preventative things that we can be doing for our pets going through chemotherapy. I'm gonna tell you my top five medications and supplements that we can be using to prevent gastrointestinal side effects. So what are those? Those are things like vomiting, diarrhea, which are gonna be pretty easy to notice. And then the dreaded one is nausea and a decreased appetite, because man, those are really hard to tell in our dogs and cats if they're having. So I'm gonna give you a few tips for identifying, but then things that we can do to really minimize those side effects. You're probably watching this because one, you're thinking about giving chemotherapy to your dog or cat, or your dog or cat is going through chemotherapy, and we wanna know what we can be doing to keep them healthy and to keep them from getting side effects. Before we hop into those medications that we can be using, let's just talk about chemotherapy side effects because probably in your life, you've had a family member or a friend go through chemotherapy themselves. And people have a lot of side effects, and you're probably gonna be surprised to hear that 80% of dogs and cats don't have side effects. And who would believe that cats, these little, little kitties, handle chemotherapy better than dogs and better than people? But again, dogs and cats handle chemo better than people. It's awesome. So we still wanna be really proactive. We don't wanna wait for them to have side effects. We wanna have medications on hand at home so if they have any side effects, we can hop on it and not wait till the next morning when your veterinarian opens. So if your pet is going through chemotherapy or you're thinking about putting them through chemotherapy, let's get them on some medications or go home with those medications and let's know what to look for. Okay, let's start with what to look for. I was waving around this sheet in the beginning. This is my chemotherapy side effect sheet, and I give it to all of my clients, all of the family members when they come in, so they know what to look for. In general, gastrointestinal side effects, so vomiting, diarrhea, soft stool, loss of appetite, nausea, in general, for most of the, the chemotherapy drugs that we're talking about, they're most likely to get nauseous, usually not the day of treatment like people, but usually one to five days after treatment. And in general, it's gonna last three to five days. But again, these medications can make their recovery quicker and make us as pet owners less stressed that we don't have to watch our pet not eat. So again, this is my chemotherapy side effect. You can download this sheet and other chemotherapy information sheets from my website, Dr. Sue Cancer Vet. We're gonna put a link below so you can find these sheets. If you're a veterinarian or veterinary team professional, I encourage you to print these out and give them to your practice. Even if you're not giving chemo, great information, because again, it's scary to think about the give Let's try that again. It's scary to be thinking about giving chemotherapy to our pets, to our patients. And again, they tolerate it really well, but we're gonna make them tolerate it even better with some simple medications. All right, so let's get to it. Got your information sheet. That was the first part. Now we send everybody home with a goodie bag. And I'll be honest, I package things in two bags. So one may be their medications that I absolutely want them to start maybe a steroid, maybe a pain medication, maybe some omeprazole, which is a stomach protectant. But these are what I call the just-in-case medications. So the first one, one of my favorite ones, is oral serenium. This comes in three different sizes. It can be used in both dogs and cats, and this is an oral anti-nausea medication. So it's really, really good at preventing nausea and treating nausea and vomiting. So when are we gonna use this? So in general, there's lots of chemotherapy drugs that when your pet comes in, I'm gonna give this as an injectable one with chemotherapy to prevent nausea, but it only lasts 24 hours. And so again, if nausea is likely to occur one to five days after chemo, I want you to have this on hand at home. This information sheet's gonna tell you what to do, but in general, if they have vomiting, go ahead and give them this if you haven't been giving it yet. And there are some medications, there's a common chemotherapy drug called doxorubicin. I'm gonna have you start this, I'm gonna give it with chemo, and then I'm gonna have you start it at home for four days after chemotherapy. And studies show that actually helps prevent vomiting and diarrhea, which is a little bit surprising, and nausea. So it's really, really helpful. It's one of my favorite medications. All of my chemotherapy patients, dogs and cats, go home on it. So it comes in different sizes. This is the 60 milligram one. This is gonna be good for like golden retrievers and big dogs. Dogs. comes in 16 milligrams so we can split that for kitties and use it off-label for kitties um, and then we have it in middle size as well so 24 milligrams so sometimes 
excuse me, we'll use combination one and a half and things like that. So we're gonna get them to the size. So again, this is a really good thing. If your pet, dog or cat is going on chemo, make sure you go home with some strenia. Number two, this is another medication that I love. This is a really good diarrhea medication. It's actually antibacterial, so it does work if your dog or cat has a bacterial induced diarrhea, but it also has an anti-inflammatory effect. They're not actually quite sure why it works so well with chemotherapy patients, but it does work well. An important thing to remember, if we have you start it, I recommend that you do it for the full five days, even if the diarrhea resolves, again, because it could be a bacterial component. Another important thing is this use chronically is not, not good. It actually can cause some neurologic side effects. They may get little twitchy uh, focal seizures and weakness and things like that. So I use a lot of this, don't be scared of it, but we're gonna use it in five day stints and we're gonna take breaks as needed. And then if you're one of those dogs that's a chronic offender having you know repeat diarrhea, diarrhea is not getting better, in my bonus section we'll talk about other things. A third thing that should be in your goodie bag, in your to go home bag, when you leave that first day, in my opinion, is a probiotic. About five different bugs in our GI tract and they do lots of good things. And you know, probiotics are in our yogurt, they're in our food. Um, I've taken them at times and we know that they do a lot of important things for our gut health. They actually help the local immune system within our GI tract and they can produce nutrients and help fight infections in the GI tract. So I love probiotics. Um, I had been using years ago a brand called um, Prostora, but it's not on the market anymore. And then I had switched to um, Fortiflora and they have a dog and a cat version. So that's great as well. It's a powder. So as long as the pet's eating, most of my owners tell me not a big deal to get them in that. Recently, I have just switched over to Proviable. It has a little bit more broad spectrum, so it has more uh, good bugs in there. So I've just switched over to this. This can be used for dogs or cats. How am I using this in my patient? What I have learned over the years, we didn't really use this when I was a resident way back yonder. They had diarrhea, soft stool, we went straight to metronidazole. What I've learned is we can avoid the antibiotics sometimes if we start the probiotic for soft stool. If your dog is, or cat has watery diarrhea, please, I recommend you start both. Obviously, talk to your veterinarian. Do not forget to talk to your veterinarian. I on the internet cannot replace your veterinarian. But again, watery, crazy diarrhea, we're gonna be doing both. But it's just a little bit of soft stool. I have found that one of these probiotics can be really, really helpful. And um, we do it daily. I usually have a lot of my patients stay on this throughout chemotherapy, usually every third day or twice a week. Um, just to kind of maintain gut health and that local immune system in there. If your dog or cat is not eating before you start chemotherapy, I'm gonna be a little bit more proactive. So the, the ones that I really think about are like kitties with gastrointestinal lymphoma, right? They often have vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite and weight loss from their cancer. And now I'm giving chemo, which could potentially exacerbate that. I'm gonna be a little bit more proactive. So in addition to the Serenium, metronidazole, and our probiotic, what do I like? One is there's this new product called Entice that just came out from Eritana, say about a year ago. It's liquid, so that's nice if your pet's not eating, right? Um, comes with a little dispenser in here as well, so your vet's gonna tell you how much. It's nice because it's also a once a day medication, but this has a different mechanism than the Serenia. So this is an anti-vomiting medication. This is a 5-NT antagonist, if you really wanted to know. This mimics ghrelin, which is our hunger hormone. So it fools the brain and the body into thinking that it's hungry from a hunger hormone. So it's really different than anything else that we have on the market and works pretty well. I have to be honest with you. I have some patients that it works great for. Pokey, if you guys have watched any of my videos, that beautiful white pity with lymphoma, Dad actually thinks that Entice works better than Serenia. They're different and they can be used together, so talk to your veterinarian. This is labeled, if you notice, for dogs. Can you use it off-label for cats. The dosing is different, so talk to your veterinarian. I'm not sure that cats love the flavor, but again, I've had some cats it works really well for and some not, so it's probably worth a try. This is the big box, the big bottle 
for cats and smaller dogs and even some of the big dogs i'll start with a smaller bottle make sure it works for them before you invest in the bigger bottle Another good appetite stimulant is a drug called mirtazapine. Again, these are all prescription. This is an antidepressant for people that happens to have the side effect that it can stimulate the appetite and has been shown to be pretty safe in dogs and in cats. We dose it very differently in dogs and cats. In dogs, we usually use it once or twice a day. Some of the newer evidence is suggesting that twice a day may be better. And then in cats, we give it every second to every third day. So every 48 to 72 hours. I use this for Jeter, um, my kitty, because Entice was not yet out. So I was, when uh, Serenia wasn't working, we tried mirtazapine. So again, you can talk to your vet about mirtazapine if your dog or cat's not eating before. Or, you know, other times for these two medications is you're using Serenia after chemotherapy and the appetite's still not improving and you're getting frustrated. So that would be other times for that. Because again, if you have a pet that eats and they don't want to eat, it is frustrating. So I feel your frustration and know that there are things that we can do. Um, some other tips before I give you my last one, my last bonus one is uh, things like heating the, the food. Often that will help stimulate. Sometimes I like low sodium chicken broth. Um, that You can pour that on the food. Sometimes that will help. Cats sometimes a little tuna um, fish or a little the oil that's in the tuna can can be good as well. So those are little things that you can do as well. Um, and if your dog or cat's not eating their regular food and you're just cooking for them, you wanna talk to your nutritionist because that's you know short term totally fine, but long term not gonna be a good option. We wanna make sure they're getting their nutrients nutrients that their body needs. Last one. What do you do if the diarrhea is not going away or if like it improves on metronidazole but you just find that once you take them off metronidazole you need something chronic. This is a great product I like. It's called RX Clay. Uh, again, another veterinary prescription product. This is a powder. So again, if your pet's eating, most pet owners, dogs and cats, tell me they can just mix it into the food or a little bit of baby food. No onion powder, dangerous for dogs and cats, causes anemia. Um, but you can use this and it has a dose for both maintenance and for active diarrhea. So a lot of times if they're one that are getting chronic diarrhea, I'll keep them on maintenance and it's pretty inexpensive and I really like this product, but it helps um, stop the diarrhea, it adsorbs the water, and it's just a really cool little product that I like. Um, so I'll use that and I do that if again, I find that the owners are trying to refill the metronidazole too much and I'm worried about that neurotoxicity. Nobody wants our pets to be having little seizures and stuff like that. Um, RX Vitamins, that company also makes their own pro probiotic as well. So there's a lot of probiotics out there. Some of them have more good strains than others. So again, make sure you're going home with your goodie bag, with your Serenia, your Serenia, your Metronidazole for diarrhea, and a probiotic. Talk to your veterinarian, make sure you get the right dosages and get specific instructions. And then don't forget to look at the sheet because that's really gonna help us in terms of what does nausea look like? What is diarrhea? But again, give you a, a couple final tips because again, if your dog has diarrhea or your cat has diarrhea, you're probably gonna see it and know it. Same thing with vomiting, right? But nausea, that's the really hard one. So a couple of things, if your pet goes up, smells the food, turns away, that's usually a good sign that they're nauseous. They smell the food and start to drool, that's usually nausea. Again, if they're not eating, that's another good sign. If you're hand feeding them and they're eating chicken, but they won't eat their regular food, a lot of owners say, oh, I didn't use the Serenia. I'm like, that's a sign that your pet is nauseous. So we're gonna go ahead and try the Serenia. So again, these are really good, relatively inexpensive medications. All of my chemo patients are going home with it. And I really hope that helps you and your pet if you're going through chemotherapy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If this was helpful, share it. Um, again, more pets that we can prevent having side effects as going through chemo so they can eat their meals, go out on runs, do agility, walk on the beach, sleep on the couch with you. That is the point of why we treat our pets with cancer. Live longer, live well. And most dogs live really, really well as they're going through chemotherapy, but these things can really, really help. Thanks for joining me, guys. I appreciate you tuning in, and I'll see you next time.